Good morning and welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. We're so glad that you chose to join us today on this feast day, which is the conversion of St. Paul. And uh, we all know, or well, maybe we don't all know, but Paul began life as Saul and he began his uh, experience of, of Jesus as a persecutor of Christians. And um, one day when he was riding to Damascus, he was suddenly surrounded by, he heard the voice of Christ saying, Saul, why, why are you persecuting me? And, um, and he went blind and uh, eventually he, he was, he went to some Christians who, and, and I am telling this terribly, and I'm sure we will hear the readings much later today that tell it much better than this. But Paul Saul became Paul and became one of the greatest, one of the most important people who spread Christianity throughout the world, the known world of the time. Um, and uh, so we will begin. And um, <clears throat> we'll begin... I do not have the page numbers today. My normal book of common prayer is at church, um, a big oversight of mine. Uh, so pardon me for not giving you the page numbers, but we let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is glorious in his saints. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Alleluia. The Lord is glorious in his saints. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Psalm. Today's Psalm is number 19, found on page 606, 606. We'll read it responsibly by whole verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens, and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then I shall be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. Our first lesson is from the prophet Isaiah. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it, he established it, he did not create it, a chaos. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I did not speak in secret in a land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me in chaos. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? And, and there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, our righteousness and strength. To him shall come and be ashamed all who were incensed against him. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall triumph in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. Let us turn to page 92 and say together canticle 16, the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If any other man thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of the Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever I gain, whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as refuse in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own based on law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that, if possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Turning to page 95, let us say together, Canticle 21, You are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. 
To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Let us say together and affirm our, our, fa our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O oh God, who by the preaching of thine Apostle Paul has caused the light of the gospel to shine throughout the world. Grant, we beseech you, that we, having his wonderful conversion and remembrance, may show forth our thankfulness unto you for the same by following the holy doctrine which he taught. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O King, O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when, <clears throat> when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and intercessions before God. We pray for our Anglican Communion and Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. We pray for the Diocese of Bouye and the Anglican Church of Burundi. We pray for our Episcopal Church and Michael, Michael, our presiding bishop. We pray for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop. We pray for the congregations of St. Francis by the Sea, Blue Hill, and St. James, Old Town. We pray for the work of Episcopal Relief and Development. And we pray for our parish of St. John's, <clears throat> our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed. For Jessica, Luin, Myrick, Sophia, our presiding bishop, Michael, Laura, and Lily. We offer continued prayers for Corky, Oliver, Liam, Nancy, Andrew, Faith, Will, Jackson, Tony, Marlin, Barry, Susan, Mycola, Sarah, Ross, James, and Piong. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples in places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of fighting in Gaza, for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters. We pray that the peoples of all nations will find ways to mitigate the climate crisis by cooperating with God's earth. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is first to expand our understanding of who our neighbors are and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity. We pray for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without, in, without a human error. And we pray for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, for our members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine. We pray for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve the nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer praise of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Dylan and Jeremy. <clears throat> we pray for the departed, for Howard LaRue, Louis, Louis Sol, Sol, and Orlando, Orlando Freighty. And we pray for the victims of wars in the Ukraine and in the Holy Land, and for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Let us say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.